Hello and welcome to another RenPy tutorial. On today's video, I'm going to show you some more advanced ways that you can control your dialog. So we're going to learn a couple of new tricks, um, are going to be a couple of new things to learn, but this is going to save you a tremendous amount of time in the long run. So before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video, and if you haven't yet, be sure you hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so. I've got a little bit of setup. I'm following the same uh, the same project that I've been using in my object-oriented programming videos. So if you're a little bit confused by the syntax that we're using, I uh, I'm using the um, uh, the setup where I created my actor class uh, to do my character objects. So if you need to, be sure you go back and check out that earlier video just so you understand everything that's going on here. Um, I've also created a few new images. Um, I've got a new character named Lana, not to be confused with Luna. I ac accidentally made their names very similar, didn't intend on that. But I've got four different facial expressions on this character. I've got angry, happy, neutral, and sad. And we're going to experiment with those a little bit later on. I'm going to show you some different ways to switch between them. Uh, I'm also doing something a little bit new. Um, I'm going to post a link to my uh, to my new Patreon account in the description below. And my $10 patrons uh, can get access to all of the graphic assets that I use in my videos going forward. So if you don't have your own assets, um, then you can check out those and download them or check out my Daz 3D channel. I will also link to that below and I show you how to create these graphics on your own for very, very, uh, for very, very cheap. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and create our new character. So I'm just gonna put it down here at the bottom of the other ones. I'm going to define our character Lana, and this is going to be actor, character, Lana. And for this one, I'm going to put an extra argument in the, um, in the character uh, class, and I'm going to put image equals Lana, and I'm doing this all in lowercase. This is going to come in handy in a few minutes because we're going to be able to use a shorthand method so that we won't have to print out the full name of the image that we're going to declare every single time. All right, uh, after that, we put in our name for our custom uh, character, or our actor object, rather. And then I need our three attributes, and I'm just going to put in 555 because we aren't really going to be using those right now, but the program is going to expect those. All right, under this, I'm going to go ahead and define our images. Um, the first one is going to be image Lana neutral equals Lana underscore neutral. So the name of the image is Lana underscore neutral dot PNG. Whenever we declare the images this way, we don't have to put the PNG. So I'm just doing Lana underscore neutral. Let me go ahead and do the other three and I will uh, rush through these. There we go. So I've got Lana neutral, Lana sad, Lana angry, and Lana happy. Uh, next, now that I've got those uh, defined, I'm going to go into my start script, uh, my script RPY rather, under my start label. And right now I've got a completely empty game, just the start label and the return statement, which ends the game. And I'm going to go ahead and set up our scene with BG lights, which is the background I've been using. And I'm going to start off by showing our character Lana happy and let's put in some quick dialogue lana.c will say my name is lana and i'm pretty happy but then we're going to have her get angry so we're going to say show lana angry oops there we go then we're going to put in our next line of dialogue but sometimes I get really angry. And then we're gonna have her go back to normal. Or actually, let's go to, new. Uh, yeah, we'll have her go back to normal. I just realized I put an extra Lana up there. But it never lasts too long. There we go. So uh, we're gonna show our background, show Lana happy deliver that one line of dialogue, show Lana angry, deliver that line of dialogue, and then show Lana happy and deliver this final line of dialogue. All right, so let's go ahead and play that through just to see what this looks like. So there's nothing new yet, but I'm gonna show you some ways that we can simplify this in a moment. There's our character, and then angry, and then back to happy again, and then it ends. 
All right, so right now we're having to put all of these show statements every time we want to change uh, our character's expression, which isn't too bad for a short script, but that can get really, really tedious after a while. Um, so we're gonna try something a little bit different. All right, so the first thing that we can do is we're gonna get rid of these extra show statements and we're gonna put these in line. So we're just going to show her happy at the very beginning. And then if we want her to be angry, after we, after we put in the uh, character dialog block, the Lana.c, we're just going to put in angry. And that's going to make her angry. And then on the next one, we're going to put in happy. And this is why we declared that extra image argument in the character. By the way, if you're doing this without using your, your custom uh, character uh, actor class like we did before, you can just do it like this. There we go, like that, and that'll work in pretty much the same way. You can do it basically uh, like we did these up here. Again, just remember to put in that extra uh, that extra argument there. But let me comment that out. We're not actually going to be using that. There we go. All right. Uh, so now let's run that real quick. Uh, let me exit out of this first, and we should get the exact same thing happen with no discernible differences. She's happy, and then she's angry. And then she's happy again. So exactly the same as what we had before, but we saved ourselves a few lines of code and a little bit of extra time. So something else that we can do is, since this angry expression only lasts for one line, we can make that a temporary expression where it'll just do it for that one line. And then after that line, it immediately goes back to whatever image we had before. So let me get rid of happy. And before angry, I'm just gonna put in an at sign, lana.c at angry. And that at sign will make that expression, that sprite happen only for that line. And then it will immediately revert back to the original uh, image, which was happy. Let's go ahead and run that one. There we go, and exactly the same thing happens, goes right back to happy. Uh, let me illustrate that in a different way, just so you can kind of see that there's no weird things going on behind the scenes. Uh, let's do... Let's say she's just feeling okay. And we'll make that neutral. And then we'll say at happy. Actually, let's do sad. And we'll leave the last line the same. That'll work, okay. All right, and then let's run that. So now she's going to start neutral and then get sad and then back to neutral. So again, that at sign just makes that sprite temporary. All right, and I'm gonna show you another great trick that you can do, and this is called monologue mode. Sometimes you might wanna have a character deliver a monologue or just a bunch of lines in a row, and there is a way that we can quickly do that. Um, and I will show you this real quick. So this way we don't have to put in lana.c and then one line of dialogue, then lana.c and then another line of dialogue and just keep doing that over and over again. Instead, we can create one big line by doing lana.c and we're gonna put in triple quotes. And now everything uh, in between these triple quotes is going to be delivered by her. So let me type in some dialogue. There we go. Now let's run that and see what we get. And there we go. And then it just does each one of those lines individually. And you'll notice that I put spaces in between all of them. But what happens if I don't put any space in? Actually, I'm just going to put all those together and then put one line at the bottom. So now you can see when I group those first lines together, then it puts them all in one text box.
So again, that way you can you know, still maintain a lot of control over it and decide how many lines are grouped together just by group, grouping them together in paragraphs inside of monologue, uh, your uh, uh, monologue mode with those triple quotes. All right, and I'm gonna show you one more little interesting trick or really just a couple of quirks with the dialogue. Uh, some of these are kind of cool. I really haven't found a way to use most of these yet. One or two of them are, are pretty useful. Um, but you might find a way of using these and I just think that they're kind of interesting to play around with. So there are certain character objects uh, that are built into RenPy that you don't have to declare. So remember that every time we declare a character by saying, you know, define Luna equals whatever, we're defining a character object. And there are some that are in RenPy by default. Um, one of those you may have used and not even realize it, and that is the narrator. So if we ever, um, if we put in text with no character attached to it, um, then it'll automatically uh, come from the narrator object, the narrator character. Um, or we can do that manually, so I'll show you real quick. You can say, this is the narrator. So again, we just put it, put text in there without declaring a character and it'll be said by the narrator, which is just a text box, a say box with no, um, with no character name attached to it. Um, just to show you that this is coming from the narrator object, you can actually put in the name of the narrator this way. This is also the narrator. There you go. So let's run that. I'll show you that in action. So there we go, the narrator, and we did it first without declaring it and then by declaring the narrator. And so it looks exactly the same. In addition to that, there is another character, air quotes, uh, called centered. Um, so this one is kind of a non-character character. Whenever you use this, whatever text you enter will just appear centered directly in the middle of the screen. Uh, and there's another one called v-centered that centers it vertically so it will kind of spell things downward so i'll kind of put those in there together so you can see how they work all right so there's the narrator also the narrator this is centered and oops oh i spelled v-centered wrong let me fix that there we go, that was an easy fix. Let's try that one more time. Narrator, narrator, centered, and then vertically centered. This is vertically centered text. And you'll notice that it goes to the left. I'm not really sure why that is, or really why this would be useful, but somebody might, uh, somebody might get some use out of that. Uh, one of the other ones that's kind of cool is called extend. And to do this one, I'm gonna put in some Lana dialogue first. So whenever you do extend, it will take the last character that spoke with that character's line of dialogue and it will add whatever you put in the extend character block, dialogue block at the end of it. So I will show you what that means. So you type in extend as the name of the character um, and we'll just say this is Lana's extended text. And I was going to do this with no spaces in between, so let me put a space there real quick, and that'll make it a little more readable. So now Lana is going to say, this is Lana. Then Lana is also going to say, this is Lana's extended text. And what this is going to do is it's just going to add that text to the same dialog box um, without, uh, uh, without clearing it out. Uh, so let me show you that. So this is Lana and then it just extends her text. And basically what that does is it does clear out the dialog box, then it creates a new dialog box with whatever that last line of text was plus whatever we added to it. Um, it just does it so fast you can't really tell. It looks like it just adds that text on the end. And normally, um, I'll show you what that would look like if we just declared that you know character twice. So it'll normally clear it out and put that in an entirely new text box without the old text. Like that, and that actually, um, yeah, there we go. 
So you can see it cleared it out that time and just put in this is Lana's extended text without the this is Lana in there. So again, those are just a couple of neat quirky things that you can do with the built-in characters. Uh, most of those, again, I don't really know how you would use them, but they're there if you want to try them. There are a couple of other ones, but these I think are the coolest ones though. All right, and that will about do us for today. Of course, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Visit me uh, on Patreon. I'm gonna put the link to that in the description below so you can make a monthly pledge. Every little bit helps, but if you pledge at either the five or $10 dollar level, um, I've got some really cool extra things that you can, uh, uh, some extra benefits that you can get a hold of. So hopefully we will see you there. If not, don't worry about it. Um, you're still gonna get the exact same great content that you've always gotten completely free. And with that, we will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.